Welcome to the second part of the video on process designs in operations management. In this video, we will focus on the recognized process layouts when designing operations processes. If you have not watched the first part of this video on process types, we encourage you to do so as this will help you understand what is discussed in this video. Once again, welcome to this video. So, what did we learn in the previous video? In the previous video, we defined what we mean by process design, and we defined this as the sequence of activities used to transform input resources into outputs. The output here could be tangible products or intangible, such as services. Using the volume and variety dimensions, we identified the process types used by organization to produce products or to render services. For products, the recognized process types are project process, jobbing process, batch process, mass process, and continuous process. For services, this could be professional services, service shops, and mass services. For this video, we will now describe a number of recognized process layouts used mainly by manufacturing organizations. However, we will also apply these to organization that render services to help you understand how the process layout discussed in this video are used for a whole range of operations. What then do we mean by process layout? Process layout refers to the physical positioning of transforming resources, facilities, or people and how tasks are allocated to these resources. The process of designing a process layout involves deciding where to put or how to position all these people or facilities in the operation. In sum, it has to do with the physical appearance of the transforming resources in the operations. The design of the operations process layout is largely derived from four layout types. These are fixed position layout, functional or process layout, line or product layout, and cell layout. Now, let's go through each process layout type and describe what they look like when adopted within a process design. Before we describe these process types, we need to clarify the difference between transforming resources and transformed resources. Where transformed resources refer to the raw materials that are then transformed to create a product or service, transforming resources refers to equipment used in creating a product or rendering a service. If you have noticed in our definition of process layouts, transforming resources are usually the focus here. In other words, how transforming resources are positioned within the operations is what is of interest in process layout. Now that we have clarified the difference between transforming and transformed resources, let's now describe the types of process layouts. The first process layout we will describe is the fixed position layout. In this type of layout, the transformed resource remain fixed or don't move during the operation. However, the transforming resources move around the product or service being transformed. By the transformed resources, we refer to the recipient of the processing, and they remain stationary. By the transforming resources, we refer to the equipment, machinery, plant and staff who do the processing and they move as required during the operations process. The reason for this could be due to the fact that the size of the product being created is too large or too delicate to be moved through a fixed transforming process. Examples of products that require a fixed position layout are medical or surgical operations, and construction projects such as bridges, roads, buildings, and so on. The next type of process layout to be described is the functional or process layout. When using this process layout, similar transforming resources used in the transformation process are located or grouped together. This is largely due to the convenience of transforming resources, so as to enhance their utilization rate or efficiency. This process type is designed to let products, information, or customers flow the through the transformation process based on the functions of the transforming resources. Functional layouts are usually adopted if the objective of the operations is to reduce costs and improve flexibility. Examples of processes that use a functional process include companies that specialize in the shipping of products, fabrication companies, and so on. The next layout to be described is the line or product layout. Unlike the process layout where convenience depends on the transforming resources, line layouts are adopted mainly for the convenience of the transformed resources. The transformed resources are the products that go through a predefined process that follows the sequence of transformation. 
Examples of product or line layouts include automobile assembly lines, mass immunization, and so on. These processes require a product or a line process layout as all the products or customers require the same sequence of processes to be transformed. The last process layout to be described is the cell layout. This is quite similar to product layouts. However, here, the resources to be transformed that enter the process are pre-selected or pre-select themselves to go into different cells designed for different transformation needs. These cells as designed such that they follow the design of the products or the services being rendered. Typical examples of a cell layout are supermarket layouts, library layouts, and hospital layouts. The physical layout of these business processes are based on the needs of the transformed resources and are grouped in cells. It is also worth noting that some operations also use hybrid layouts where two or more of these process layouts are adopted within an operation. These are the process layouts commonly used when designing operations processes. Now let's us quickly summarize all that we have learned so far in this video on process layouts. First, we distinguished between transforming and transformed resources. Where transforming resources refer to the equipment used in the process of transformation, the transformed refers to the product or service being created. After we distinguished between transforming and transformed resources, we then defined process layout. This we defined as the physical appearance of the transforming resources within an operation. In this video, we identified four recognizable process layouts. The first layout identified is the fixed position layout where the transformed product or service remains stationary, while the transforming resources move around the product being created or service being rendered. Functional or process layout where the transforming resources remain stationary but are set up based on the convenience of the transforming resources. Line layout where the layout is designed based on the convenience of the process of creating the transformed product or service. This layout is usually depicted in linear cues or lines. Finally, the cell layout. This is similar to the line layout, but products entering into the transformation process are pre-selected or pre-select themselves into cells based on their transformation needs. These are the types of process layouts discussed in this video. Could you think of a business and use these process layouts to describe its operations processes? Well, that will be all for this video, and once again we want to thank you for stopping by. We are so grateful that you watch our videos. Please, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified when we upload new videos on operations, supply chain, and project management. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.